Hi everyone, I'm Nicole Wakeland with Car Gurus, and this is the 2017 Ford Escape. It's not all new this year, but it did receive a pretty good mid-cycle refresh. It got two new EcoBoost engines, a snazzy new sport appearance package, improved driver assist technologies, and they did a lot of work on the infotainment system. Sync 3 now comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. There's also Sync Connect with Ford Pass. So let's take a closer look at the 2017 Ford Escape and see what it's all about. The Escape we're driving today is the 2017 Titanium with four-wheel drive. It comes with a couple of packages. There's the more powerful two-liter EcoBoost, a panoramic sunroof, you got adaptive cruise control, and you have that sport appearance package. Once you add all those options in, you're looking at $37,045. That's near the top end of the range for this car. You can get the base model for quite a bit less. It's just over $23,000. So it all depends on how plush you want your car to be. One of the new things for 2017 is a sport appearance package. You can get it on either the SE or the Titanium, which are the top two trim levels. It's $725 and it adds just appearance things. There's nothing to actually make the car drive sportier than it did before, but it does look a little bit better. You get 19 inch wheels that are, have a black trim to them instead of the silver trim. You get lots of black accents on the grille and the exterior. So it ups the appearance and the, the looks of your car, makes it stand out a little bit from other crossovers and even other escapes, but it doesn't do anything as far as changing how the car actually drives. Now above my head, there's plenty of light because we have an optional panoramic sunroof. It is an expensive option. It's $1,495. But panoramic sunroofs are really great, especially in a crossover. It gives you light to the whole vehicle. So the people in the back, it feels bigger than it is. So crossovers are not generally the most fun cars to drive. They're kind of like SUVs, but sedans, but sedans, but SUVs. Like they don't quite know what they want to be. I have to say, the Escape does a pretty good job of busting that image. It is an enjoyable car, it has plenty of power, and the handling is good. Really, it doesn't feel top heavy. It doesn't feel like you're driving something big and bulky, yet you have a lot of room for cargo back there. You can put a lot in this car. It's very well mannered. It takes corners nicely. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't like driving a sports car. Make no mistake about it, it's still a crossover, but it's a crossover that's actually fun to drive. Even when you take it on the highway, there's some pep behind this engine whether you're trying to accelerate on an exit ramp or you're already in heavy traffic and you're trying to pass someone this isn't gonna let you down you're gonna feel very confident behind the wheel and very controlled there's new driver assist features on the Escape this year. Not all of them are on every car. In fact, they aren't even all on the model that we're driving today, but we do have some of them, like adaptive cruise control, which lets you set how far you wanna go from the car in front of you, and it will automatically keep that distance even if it needs to slow down and then speed back up to the speed that you have preset. So as traffic slows, you don't have to worry so much about hitting the brakes because suddenly traffic is slowed and cruise control is keeping you going too fast. There's also a driver alert that will warn you if you're driving a little sloppy because maybe you're too tired and that will hopefully encourage you to take a break, get out of the car, do some jumping jacks so you don't fall asleep behind the wheel. There's also lane keep assist and even a brake warning so that if you're going too fast and it thinks you're going to hit what's in front of you, you get this bright red light on your dashboard, it beeps at you. Again, as a warning to let you know that you need to slow down. One of the other things that unfortunately isn't on our test vehicle is this enhanced park assist. It helps you get in and out of parking spaces. They've had this on other vehicles, but they've improved it for the escape. Makes it easier if you're someone who hates to, to park in tight spaces. It makes it a little less likely that you're gonna be anxious and a little less likely you're gonna tap the curb or the car next to you. One of the challenges with a crossover is making it quiet inside. They're essentially just boxes on wheels. They're not very aerodynamic, so it can get loud, particularly with wind noise. The Escape does a pretty good job. You don't have a lot of wind noise, even when the weather outside is rainy and awful. It doesn't intrude it too much into the cabin, and the road noise is also muted, so even after a long road trip, you're not gonna be so weary. Part of what makes the drive really smooth in a car is how well the transmission works and the six speed automatic in the Escape is really nice. It's your only choice. There's no other options regardless of the trim level that you get. It's very smooth, makes the most use of the power the car has without ever feeling jerky or feeling off and making you think that it should be shifting up or down. Very quiet, adds to a nice pleasant ride. The 2017 Escape has three different engine choices. It starts with the base model 
S, which comes with a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine. You have to step up to the SE trim if you want to get a more powerful engine, and that would be the 1.5 liter EcoBoost engine. Then at the top of the heap, there's a two liter EcoBoost. These are turbocharged, and that gives you 245 horsepower, 275 pound feet of torque. It's a $1,300 option, which is a little bit pricey, but this is a fun car to drive, so having that extra horsepower is really worth it if you can afford it. If you want the full engine specs, go ahead and follow the link over to Car Gurus and you can read up on the details on all three engines available in the Escape. Outside the Escape looks good, it looks almost upscale. Really, especially with that appearance package, it's an attractive car. Unfortunately, when you open the door and you look inside, it's not quite living up to that expectation. It's a little bit plasticky, especially on the dashboard. There's a piece that overhangs the infotainment system that just, it really doesn't look good at all. Same with the seating, it's a combination of fabric and leather, and although you have that bit of leather, it just doesn't pull off looking as nice as the outside. It's almost like they're a little mismatched, like they needed to step it up a little bit in the interior. You can see what they're going for, but they don't quite pull it off. Part of the mid-cycle refresh included changing how the center console area looks. They've given you a lot more space. There's a couple of different little cubbies here. The console area that opens up actually opens up in two pieces so you've got a top layer and then a deeper layer for bigger objects you also have two usb ports one in the front and then one inside of that cubby it's nice that they're lighted so when you can't see what you're doing at night and it's dark you can still see because there's a little light around it there's even a 110 volt outlet on the back of the center console so if you need to keep your stuff charged you're covered the interior is comfortable Seating is easier to position and there's a decent amount of room in the back seat. Although if you're really tall up front and you push that seat all the way back, whoever's behind you, their knees are going to be a little bit squished. Uh, that can be a challenge, but if you're just taking two adults up front and throwing kids in the back, you're totally fine. There's also a hands-free lift gate. It's an optional thing. It's not standard and you just wave your foot underneath it like in a little arc and it pops open. So if your hands are full, you don't have to worry about fumbling for your key or fumbling to get the latch on the trunk opened up. It makes it a lot easier if you're going to be loading things and your arms are full. And what you end up with for cargo space is 34 cubic feet behind the second row and 68 cubic feet behind the first row. It's a good amount of space. You also have seats that split fold 60-40, so depending on how you want to configure that, you could still have someone sitting there and still use a little bit of that extra cargo space. Something I really like too, if you've ever folded seats down and had the headrest smack into the back of the front seats, then you have to pull them back up, you have to pop the headrest off and find a place to put those headrests. There's a little button and you can just push the button on the side of the headrest and it instantly flips down and you're okay and you're not stopped from doing what you want to do and having to fumble to find a place to store those headrests. So Sync Connect with Ford Pass is a pretty nifty feature that you can only get right now on the Escape as of the time that we're recording this. It lets you use an app on your phone, the Ford Pass app, and it connects to your car. You put the VIN number in so it knows exactly which vehicle is yours and then you can do all sorts of neat stuff from your phone. You can unlock and lock the car, you can start it. You can see how much gas you have left so that you know if you're running low and you need to plan to stop to get gas before you head out for the day. It also gives you vehicle updates. Beyond that, just the stuff to do with your car, it'll help you find parking spots if you're in a city. We couldn't really get that to work so much where we are, where it's not such an urban area. And there's something called Ford Perks. So they have partners in there that when you use those partners, you can actually win free loot that they'll send to your house. So it's almost like, think of it like a frequent shopper kind of thing that's worked into your app. It's a lot more inclusive than just starting and stopping your car. And there's also four guides that you can connect with. They will help you with questions about where you are, about where to eat, about where to park, about what's in the area, give you all sorts of help, and they can answer questions about the car if you have questions about your escape. So Ford Sync 3 looks like this. It's updated from before. It's easier to navigate through the menus than it was before. Everything makes a lot more sense. Even though the system is significantly updated, you might like to use your iPhone if you've got an iPhone. Once you plug that in, Apple CarPlay looks like this, which mimics what you see on your phone. You don't really have to learn anything new. It's the same system you're used to using all the time. You want to get back to Sync 3? Not a problem. Push this button, it takes you right back in there, and you have your menus that you can easily find what you're looking for. An area where the Escape hasn't done so great in the past is with crash test ratings, but for 2017, those numbers go up. Both the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety and NHTSA have given it good ratings. The only place where it doesn't quite excel is in the small overlap front test, 
where it gets one step down from the best rating. And there were also some concerns about reaching those child safety anchors in the latch system. They're kind of buried deep in the seat, so they're a little tough to get to. And they felt that it was easy to get it confused with other hardware. So those are the only two areas where it really got gigged as far as safety. If fuel economy is your priority, you're going to do pretty good with the Escape. It gets 20 miles per gallon in the city, 27 on the highway for 23 miles per gallon combined. It's not the best that you can get, but it certainly does really well. So you're going to be okay when those gas prices go back up. So the crossover market is a hot one, which means there's lots of competition. The Escape needed an update to stay relevant and Ford delivered on all fronts. It has more powerful engines, it has new driver assist technology, and they updated the infotainment system. There's plenty to like about the new Escape. They've also priced it affordably with enough options that you can make it as plush as your wallet can handle. And this is one of the more fun crossovers that you can buy. It's really enjoyable to drive. You can read my full review over at cargurus.com. Go ahead and click the subscribe button to see more great video reviews and let us know what you think of the 2017 Ford Escape. Do you like the changes? Do you think the updates are enough to make you buy this over, say, last year's model or maybe a Toyota RAV4? Tell us in the comments.